Hello, ahalo sahla. My name is Alexander Magadow. I'm a professor at the University of Rhode Island, and today I will be demonstrating the Database of Arabic Dialects website, a website for collaborative collection and searching of data on Arabic dialects for scholars. <clears throat> the motivation for creating this website was a way to create a way to collect and bring together the data that's scattered throughout a variety of different sources on Arabic dialects, bring it together in one place, and allow scholars to search through that data in a meaningful and useful way. Anyone who works in Arabic dialectology knows that data on Arabic dialects is scattered in a variety of places. There are entire books on a single dialect, there are encyclopedia articles on a single dialect, sometimes one will find a citation for a very interesting form in a single place in an article on an otherwise different topic. The idea of the di database of Arabic dialects is to be able to bring all this data together in a single place so that one can quickly and easily search through it and test and check hypotheses that you're making about uh, Arabic dialectology. Personally, I'm using the website to a large degree to write a book on the history of Arabic pronouns, demonstratives, and interrogatives. <clears throat> uh, I am the primary creator of the website, and you can feel free to email me at amagidow at uri.edu. <clears throat> to illustrate the kind of questions that we want to be asking about Arabic dialects, let's look at a quote from an article. I'm not trying to single anyone out here. We find a lot of hypotheses in Arabic dialectology, but this was just an excellent, very testable hypothesis. Regarding the feminine plural, the feminine plural is a morphological category that is found throughout the Arabic-speaking world. If a variant, that is a dialect, has a distinct feminine plural, it has it throughout the grammatical system. That is, in subject marking on verbs, object marking in pronouns, feminine plural demonstratives, etc. This is a very strong hypothesis. We should be able to find dialects that have only all feminine plural marking throughout their linguistic systems. Any dialect that doesn't have such a thing would disprove the strong version of this hypothesis. However, it's very difficult for us to make any sense of this hypothesis simply by searching through a variety of grammars and sort of collating things manually. It'd be nice if we would be able to search through it. As I will come back to the, towards the end of this uh, exploration of the features of this of this website, but let's hold in mind this kind of hypothesis. When you first load up the Database of Arabic Dialects website, which can be accessed either through the web address that you see here, or through the web address database-of-arabics-dialects.org, and eventually it will move permanently to that uh, address, <clears throat> you'll see you'll come to this page. There's an About section, which lists information about versions and changes, allows you to log in if you have a log, login credentials, and has informational lists that I'll talk about in a moment. You can also go to the data visualization area. There's a map search, a list search, a search by paradigm, and what I call a cross search, which we'll discuss later. To give you a sense of how this website works, let's go to the list search. If you aren't logged in, and you'll see in the lower right corner there's a login question mark box, you will only be able to see publicly available data. At present, the only publicly available data is a, a variety of data on demonstratives uh, coming from my own doctoral dissertation. So to see all of the data in the uh, database that's publicly available, we can just press the submit button. Obviously, this will be a somewhat slow process because we're loading a large variety of data. But if we wanted to, we could enter more criteria to narrow down our search. Look at this list. On the left, we have the datum, the individual piece of Arabic language. And we have a gloss, what this datum means. A lot of its data, data is morphological, and therefore the gloss is not terribly helpful. We might have an annotation that gives us some information about uh, the piece of data. And then we'll find the name of the dialect that has this piece of data the tags that are applied to this piece of data, the source for this data, 
And this color just allows us to do multiple searches and sort by the things that we are looking for in our search. For example, we can sort through this and um, uh, reorder the list based on the name of the dialect. So we start with AFGA, Afghani Arabic. Um, most of these tags are fairly self-explanatory, but if you don't know which dialect is which, you can go to the info list, look at dialect, the dialect list, and you can see a much more helpful listing of the names and where they are, and you can even see their latitude and longitude if you need this for some purpose. The heart of this database is a single linguistic datum. As I said, every datum will have a gloss, it can have an annotation, it will be linked to a dialect, which as we saw, have, each dialect has its own information, and it will have tags. Tags are, in a sense, the heart of how we can search through this database. Each item has tags that uniquely describes its linguistic class and features. So we see that these are closed class items, they're adnominal demonstratives, pronominal demonstratives, they're proximal. This one is masculine, this one's singular, here's a feminine singular. The tags describe each piece of data, and you can see where the sources are. We want to be able to tell the user of the website where exact this data is from so that they can track it down and find what exact place in which book each piece of data was found. There's nothing more frustrating than someone citing a form and having no ability to find it again later. So we can look into, here's the unique ID for each of these sources, and then you can find the full name of the source. You can also search by the unique, sort by the unique ID to make it easier to find what one you're looking for. Now, of course, the people who type this data in are not the same as the authors of these books. And for this reason, it's very important for us to keep track of contribution of data. A lot of researchers spend can spend a lot of time entering data. It's highly skilled work since one needs to be able to read multiple languages, understand Arabic dialectology very thoroughly, and be willing to put in the time to actually enter the data into the system. So what we can see, for, for example, that I have entered 814 public pieces of data, but I have a, a lot of data that is not public, it's private. Only I can see that data, or certain collaborators that I allow to see that data. This is in order to keep, to incentivize people to enter data, even if they're working on a project where they're afraid that by entering the data, they can make it so easy to, for other scholars to make the same conclusions they will, that they can, quote unquote, get scooped. So in order to um, avoid that, I allow for different privacy settings for the data. <clears throat> As I mentioned, we can also do what I call a map search. So we have a map here, and we can search, and our data, our search will show up on the map. So, for ex so one excellent search would be to determine which dialects have an interdental, and which dialects have an intervocalic uh, <coughs> fricative uh, as a reflex of the original um, interdental fricatives. So, this is, this is a nice thing that we can search through using just demonstrative data. In the demonstratives, where we will either have a D or a TH sound. All of my data is entered, though you will be able to enter your data in other forms. All my data is entered in IPA symbols. So let's do a search. Yellow, we'll see all dialects that have a TH sound in yellow, and all dialects that have a stop in blue. So as we can see, we have a variety of yellow dialects, dialects which have uh, interdental fricatives, so have uh, in this particular dialect, and we can see the exact forms that are picked out by a search. And in blue, we have the dialects that have a stop, da, dol, etc. Some dialects have both reported in the sources, and so, for example, in Tunisia, both are both. Uh, stop and fricative forms have been uh, reported by Singer, and so we see both, and it creates an averaged color, sort of a green, in between the two colors that we searched with. <clears throat> now, as I said, the 
The website restricts certain things if you are not logged in. So if you log in, and if you are interested in a login and using the website, please contact me directly. At present, there is no way for an anonymous individual to come and log, create a, a login for the website, since I want to ensure at, the, at first that only trusted users are adding data to the database. Once we log in, you'll notice that there's a new category of things, of ways, of ways to interact with the website, the input section. As I said, each piece of data consists of the Arabic language uh, datum, sometimes the original orthography, the source, a basic, a brief translation, what, we, what I call a gloss, annotation, the location in the source where you found that piece of information, and the and the appropriate tags. Of course, entering data like this would be very slow going. And for this reason, I strongly encourage users to actually take advantage of the paradigm input approach. The idea of the paradigm input is that we don't want users to accidentally forget to apply a tag or apply the wrong tag and to have to deal with all of those details. For that reason, it's better if they can type things in, in as if they were typing in into a table for a publication. So we say that we're typing everything into the National Phonetic Alphabet, but you can also type things in in book, Walter transcription, or the Word Atlas um, transcription, which is very similar to the ZDMG. You choose which dialect you're going to be entering data for, you choose the source document, and then you uh, include the, link, the location of where you found this information. You can change your permission settings to make it fully public, public, but cannot be exported through the various export tools, and which language you're going to be glossing, you would like to gloss the item in. To illustrate this, I actually need to do some data input for the past tense verb suffixes. Notice here that you can actually change which kind of verb suffix you're going to. Unfortunately, my screen capture will not show you the other window, but I'm going to enter some data on Chadian Shua Arabic. So first we go to Chadi and Shua. We go to our source document, which is Hagege, 1973. It's on page 42. And then we can simply enter the data. So in the first person singular, it's simply a T. In the masculine, it's a T. In the feminine, it's TI. In the feminine third person, it's at. In the first plural, it's na, it's to in uh, the masculine plural, and tan in the feminine plural, o in the masculine uh, third person, and an in the feminine third person. Once we've submitted this data, it will now be found in the database, and we can go and look at the paradigm search to see the same data that we just entered. So we go to past tense verb set suffixes. We enter Chadian, and it will give you a suggestion of dialects. And you can see the data that we just entered. Of course, it's very easy to search for other data that we might be interested in. Finally, I'd like to illustrate the cross search. The cross search is kind is best conceived of as an implicational search. You search for one thing. If a dialect has X, what does it have for Y, Z? A, B, and C. And we can use this search to illustrate exactly how our, um, to, to go back to this question of if fem you have feminine plural, does it exist throughout the dialect? So we're interested as our main form, let's look at all dialects that have a feminine plural independent pronoun, since this seems like a likely place for there to be a feminine plural. So pronoun dot independent feminine plural and let's see whether any dialect that has an independent pronoun has a feminine has feminine plural plural suffix pronouns and let's also see what their demonstratives look like so feminine plural demonstratives we don't actually have to go with the full tag name. Any tag that has demonstrative in it will get searched by this term. Let's submit our query. And we can see 
it's helpful to sort on a single column. And we can see that <clears throat> there are a lot of missing, there are some missing uh, cells in the second column. It may be that I simply have not yet entered the data for this particular dialect, or it might be that this, this dialect truly lacks a feminine plural uh, suffix pronoun form. For example, let's look at uh, Na Has. This is Hasania Arabic. We can go to the um, we're in the paradigm search right now, and let's look at the independent pronouns. Here we do see that there are feminine plural pronouns in tumati and humati, but if we go to the pronoun suffixes, we don't see any feminine plurals. So this dialect disproves the hypothesis that we looked at earlier, that all dialects that have feminine plural have it throughout their system. And we'll notice that this is particularly true when you come to the demonstratives. Having a feminine plural demonstrative is quite rare, whereas having a feminine plural independent pronoun or pronoun suffix is fairly common. So with just a click of a few buttons and quite a lot of time spent doing data entry, we are able to quickly and easily test hypotheses about the Arabic dialect using this website. If you are interested in using the database of Arabic dialects for your own research, please contact me. Or if you would like, are interested in doing some collaborative work, contact me as well. As I said, at present we are not allowing anyone who wishes to to log in without contacting me first. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.